Hi, welcome. How welcome everybody. Um, this is Stacy coming to you live from Golden in upstate New York and it is this beautiful sunny day here. It's nice to see the sun again. Um, we're going to today uh, look at our open line of slow drying acrylic paints and I'm going to take you through um, mediums, its mixability with other acrylics, um, some other fun uh, applications. Um, so if you don't mind saying hi, where you're coming from, I'll check the comments periodically. Um, we'll be joined with Scott Fisher, one of our materials and applications specialists, um, who will be here to answer questions in the chat. Um, I also want to invite you to join us on Instagram, where we'll be doing short demonstrations all month uh, using Open. So um, join us. And anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, I see someone from Vancouver, from Texas, from Georgia, from Connecticut, from Iowa. That's so wonderful. I am a native Floridian, so I'm enjoying the sunshine today. All right, let's go ahead and get going. Um, let's see, so let's start my overhead view. There we go. So if you go ahead and look here on the tabletop, I've got several things. Um, it'll tell a little bit of the story of what we're gonna go over today. Um, open. Uh, our paint line that we're talking about is a slow drying acrylic. So for some, this is a real benefit. Um, and we'll talk about what those benefits are, the unique characteristics of this paint, uh, how it really functions in a specific space. Um, and you can determine if that's the right choice for you. Um, we'll also look at our open acrylic gels, our open mediums, our open thinner, some color, and just uh, have some fun today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, on Instagram, I've actually unboxed a small introductory set, and I put it in a palette just to show that, you know, with a sealed palette, this paint will keep a long time. And since you use Open in thinner applications, it's not a paint like a heavy body that you can just like palette knife out in big, thick chunks. That's not really the best use of this paint. You find that it goes a long way. So there's an economy to this paint. So this little palette is what we'll be using, uh, of this palette of colors is what we'll be using all month on Instagram. And just to show you, this has been a week in this palette and everything is just ready to go. Um, it's a slow drying acrylic, so it is going to not set up as fast as the other. So I can put a tiny bit of medium in this and it'll just get going right away. Um, also, I'll talk to you today about palette management using our uh, open thinner. So if I spritz this with open thinner, close it up, I'm gonna be really great into the next session. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So today I painted out two swatches here, um, and this is a great, I think, demonstration of how these paints are different. One is dry and one is not, and it's quite warm in the studio, sunny. Um, people always ask, you know, well, how much slower is open and drying than our regular heavy body acrylics? And so much of that depends on what you're painting on, where you live how humid, how dry. There are many, many factors that determine how fast a paint is going to dry, but on average, it's around 10 times longer. Now, if I'm painting very thinly on a piece of paper, you may not really recognize a huge difference because 10 times fast is still pretty fast. But when you start putting on multiple layers, like, or just, you know, a little bit more of a generous coverage, you will definitely notice a difference. So I have this here as a demonstration. This was done a couple of hours ago here in the studio. But let's go ahead and take a look at these tubes first. This is our standard heavy body um, acrylic tube. You'll see it's white with the black text. If you're in the store and you're looking for the slower dryer, um, you can tell right away uh, that it's our open line by this black label. It's really distinct. So when they're on the racks, they have a different look. And then an open means you have more open time because it is a slower drying acrylic. Um, and that is on the label. Uh, these are professional grade paints, just like our heavy body. They're heavily pigmented. You're not losing um, quality in the paint. They are just going to be different. So let's go ahead and take a look at this little example. Um, on this little example, I painted out with the heavy body a stroke here, and if you look at it, it's got a little bit of texture to it. And if I pull my fingernail across it and stop talking, you might hear it. 
So it's got a little texture. It's not super thick. I wouldn't call it impasto, but I'd say that the brush strokes, you know, are visible and I can feel them when I rub my finger across. So this is, this is actually um, the heavy body and it is dry. Okay, I can't, I can't get that to move at all. But then this was done at the exact same time, about the same thickness of application of open. And when I pull my finger across it, look at that, it's still wet. <laughs> Um, also, I'm going to show you some more interesting things on this demo in a moment, um, but you know, I have more time to work with this paint and that's why we formulated it. It feels, and I'm going to show you, you know, I'm going to do some painting out here in a minute, but it feels a little creamier or slicker, I should say, um, than the heavy body. It has a distinct um, feel to the paint. I would not say it feels like oils, um, but it is slicker. Uh, has less pushback on the brush than your heavy body would. Um, it's a nice sort of middle ground between oils and faster drying acrylic. So if you want to transition from oils, use something that's uh, waterborne that's going to dry faster than an oil. Open can be a good choice. Some things to know about open. Um, when painting with open, you want to keep your, your coverage sort of thin. You don't want to have areas that are really thick. Um, I don't know if you can tell, there you go. See, that's a big glob. I actually put a glob of paint on the board and then started blending from there. That is three days old. That was done um, Tuesday. And when I pull this, it's sticky. I, I don't, see, look there, I can just stick my brush in there. It's all sticky and gross. That is gonna take a very, very, very long time to lock down. We recommend you don't work that thickly with uh, open. If you want to get a impasto effect um, and you want to use open because it's on your palette, we're gonna recommend that you mix that with some faster drying acrylics. So I just saw some questions in the chat. I'm gonna pause for just a second, take a few of those questions and then get to painting with you. Okay, so when I, I saw one go by and someone was saying they love using open for plain air and I have to tell you, we have a, Kevin, my colleague, is going to unpack our landscape set and do some color mixes with you and talk about uh, its use in plain air uh, later um, in the month. So look for that. Uh, let's see. Okay, can these palettes? Um, let's see, sorry about this, guys. I'm just checking. I think I'll come back to the chat in a minute. It's kind of got away from me. Uh, and of course, Scott is there to answer questions as well. So, um, there's a question, is the thinner toxic? It's not a solvent, it's actually a surfactant. And we'll get into that in just a minute. So, it is not what you think of when you think of a thinner, uh, typically, in paint. Also, what's on this board, just to let you know, is um, I have some just swatches out from a previous demo of the open mediums. I have the open medium matte and the open medium gloss swatched out here. The open mediums can be used with the open paints um, to extend that paint. This is more of a fluid type medium, and I'll open that up here and show you. Um, and what I had done before is I'd actually demonstrated how water um, will act almost as a solvent with acrylics. It won't, you can use water to dilute your acrylics, that's fine, but if the acrylic starts to tack up and you want to extend that acrylic and you add water, it'll actually kind of bite you a little bit. It'll remove the acrylic and that's why you see that gone here. But uh, before I paint this out, I just want to show you that one is a glossy sheen, that's our gloss, and the other one is a matte sheen. So that's what they look like dry. When they go out, let's see, this is the medium gloss. I'll put that over here. When they go out on your palette and you get ready to use them, they are actually white, so they will clarify as they dry. Just pull that down. I don't have any paint on here. I'm just going to pull this down. So the matte will look glossy until it dries and the gloss will just look wet as it starts to dry. So you can get a sense of um, how the viscosity of this paint is. It's quite fluid. 
it's a wonderful medium to keep the drying time slow while creating glazes or extending your paint. You can also add that to regular acrylic paints to slow down their drying time. So if you have acrylics already on your palette, you have the heavy body or the fluid or high flow, and you just want to slow down the dry time and have this kind of, um, this kind of, um, sorry, I grabbed the thinner, uh, sheen and uh, consistency of the paint, then you can absolutely use the open mediums with your faster drying acrylics. Okay, so yes, open is mixable with our other acrylics, that's right. But what it'll do is it'll change the drying time. So if you mix open acrylics with any of our other paint lines or our mediums, gels, or pastes, what will happen is it will speed up the drying time. So I went ahead and made a, kind of answering a question and getting a little off topic. I'll go back to the open mediums in just a second. But I went ahead and, um, we went ahead and made this, our team made this. I actually didn't make this. My helper, um, another Stacy, made this and she did a beautiful job <laughs> um, on this. So we actually created a board here just to show you um, open combined with some of our gels and paste um, as a demonstration, you know, kind of proving that yes, you can use these. They're beautiful, uh, it works, um, it just speeds up the drying time. So something to consider with that is if I am working with open and combining it with other materials to speed up the drying time, as a general rule, you will want to put uh, slow dryers over fast dryers. So if you can imagine, if I have a slow dryer under a fast dryer, that fast dryer can create like a little skin on top and, and make the slow dryer a lot slower to dry and can, you know, possibly create some crazes or little, you know, undulations on that surface that may not be desirable. But if you're mixing like this where there's just a little bit and you continue, you know, that mix and you come in on top with straight open out of the tube, you should be absolutely fine. These are beautiful. So these are some of our, um, this is our, um, some of our gels. And we have a, a granular gel and a bit glass bead and pumice gels, this is fine and extra coarse. And then we have some mold, uh, molding paste and, and fiber paste and uh, coarse molding paste here. They're beautiful, light molding paste, all with open. So Open also has a gel, and it's a little different than those gels. You saw how thickly those gels were applied. That's not an issue with, um, with our faster drying acrylics. Uh, but again, with Open, you don't want to get too thick. So our gels, our Open gels, I'm gonna pull some out of this container here and show you what it looks like. This is our Open acrylic gel. It serves a different function. It's just a little bit more, um, put some down here. A little bit more of a viscous medium for open or for your other faster drying acrylics that you may want to slow down. Uh, but it is not to be put on very thickly like our other gels can. Um, again, back to that, it can get sticky, you know, when it's very, very thick. These look very dimensional just because of the transparency of the brush stroke. I'll hold that up to the light in just a moment. So we have a matte and a gloss of that as well. I'm just going to put some paint out and show you this. The paint itself is softer and uh, just glides a little bit more uh, on the brush, less resistance on the brush than our heavy body. It's very soft and creamy. And when I mix this with the gel, I want that gel to also get that kind of coverage you know, where I just don't let it pile up or it will stay very sticky. What's nice about it though is I can extend my paint without changing the um, consistency of the paint a whole lot when using the gel. And I can also use it as a kind of a little bit more of a, a dense or viscous glaze. So it's a, it's a really nice addition to your palette. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. If you look at the red area, these areas are dry. That is the gloss gel. And this side over here, you can see there's very little sheen in the center on that red piece. That is the matte gel, dry. 
Okay, terrific. Something else to show you. All right. Let's go back to this for a moment. Okay, I have this little paint out. Remember, this is heavy body, it's dry. It's not gonna do anything. And then this is the open and it's sticky. So we have a product called Open Thinner. Um, open Thinner is an additive, it is not a medium. You don't want to use more than 25% of the thinner with your paint. It can be used to extend open. Uh, it'll just feel really differently than the mediums. Um, it can also be used with water to as a dilution to keep your palette wet longer and you can also use it to slow down the drying time of your regular acrylics what i'm going to do here is just show you the difference between the thinner medium and water when i try to like get the sticky paint to move again so i'm going to actually start with the water remember i told you in the beginning water kind of has a solvent effect with acrylic so you know, I remember as a student doing this all the time, trying to like move my paint with water, with acrylic, and getting really frustrated that I started to create a bald spot, if you will, in my, in my painting, which can be really cool. If I want to subtract the paint, you know, that's, that's good to know that, that water just has this effect on acrylics before they cure and lock down, you can actually start to lift it. Once it's dry though, it's gonna be in, on there for good. So it's, you know, it will lock down and, and be a permanent paint. But for right now, it still can be active and moved. Now this heavy body has only been dry for a couple of hours. There is a chance that it might still want to lift because it's not cured yet, but nope. Nope, not at all, not coming up at all. Great. So now the thinner won't quite do that. So if I use thinner, a little drop. Now remember, I don't want to use a bunch of thinner um, as a medium because I only want to put about 25%. But if I'm gonna just try to reactivate some paint, I can do that, but it's gonna keep the paint kind of more so on the surface, right? But it will lift somewhat. But a medium has a binder in it. It's gonna lock down, it's the glue, if you will, for a lack of a better word. And the medium, if I do this with the medium, I can really extend that paint all the way into a glaze. There we go. And that'll lock down really nicely. So those are three different options, you know, when working with uh, open. If you really wanted to continue to work that surface, a gel or a medium, and sometimes a little thinner can get it moving um, in a different way than water will. I mean, water can be beautiful as well. It's just gonna do something else. Okay, and that this actually, um, Sometimes mediums can, if a, a regular acrylic is just dry to the touch and not locked down, sometimes they can get them going. But, you know, this has been dry a few hours, so maybe, maybe not. Let's try it for fun. Not really. I think that blue's just left on my brush. So we're done with that. That is done. That is dry. It's not going anywhere. All right. Super. So this is our color chart and on our documentation anywhere uh, on our website we have a color list for each one of our products and um, if you happen to have one of our color charts open is indicated by the little black tube you can see we have a lot of little black tubes on this sheet um, if you want to know what we have um, for open and color just check our website we have a, a pretty wide variety around 80 approximately 80 colors um, so let's go ahead and start painting yay <laughs> just going to do a quick blend over some other pieces that I did here. Um, this is also uh, has a little bit of the gel on it. This is the gloss and this is the matte. So I'm just going to do a blend on top so you can get a sense of this paint. Then we'll pull a, a print real quick because, you know, it's slow drying um, attributes and its viscosity make it perfect for printmaking. I'm actually going to put this over here. So I'll just show you that as well. We'll take some questions. Make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is quinacridone magenta. Oh my goodness, look at that color. So pretty, so rich. It's a transparent, uh, beautiful magenta color. So it's like little stained glass pieces of pigment in here. So it just wants to be 
shiny and see-through. Now I'm going to pair that with Titan Buff, which is a, I want to say it's a semi-opaque. Check me on that, Scott Fisher, because this, there we go. And I'm just going to blend. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show you that this is the, really how this paint wants to behave. If you get any of this in your hands, you'll see that this, is, this paint wants to blend. It's terrific um, for those that work this way. And, you know, for painters who are transitioning from, you know, really student grade paint, but they're still learning, this is just a terrific uh, way to go because it gives you more time to rework that surface. It gives you more time to blend and create gradations. It's an absolutely wonderful uh, option for you there. And I could keep going all day. This just feels so nice. It's a beautiful gradation there of the, uh, well, look at how this really on the camera, this middle, middle tone just absolutely explodes on camera. I don't think it's quite that fuchsia in person. <laughs> well, this is not as dark in person. Oh, that's interesting. It's very pretty. Okay, so I'm going to check some, uh, the chat really quickly and then I'll jump on and do a print. Oh yeah, quinacridone. This is quinacridone magenta, but the quinacridone red is gorgeous as well. Um, so too much water can spoil paint film. Well, you know, you can put a lot more water with our paint and our binders than you might think. Um, there's a great article on that. We've done some research. What can happen after a point is um, it can become water sensitive, but then eventually lock down. Um, maybe Scott could put that link in the chat um, so you can read our article and see our research. You, you might um, be surprised at how much water acrylics really can withstand, um, or at least our acrylics, because we tested on our, our binders and our acrylics. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull a print. It's not going to be... Um, I'm not going to make art with you here today. I'm just demonstrating. <laughs> so um, I'll show you two different ways um, that this can work for you on a print. So here's a piece of plexiglass. Um, actually, regular glass works great. You can go to the dollar store and pick up an old, just a frame and take the glass out, tape the edges so you don't cut yourself. And, but this is plex. Acrylics will bind to um, this type of plastic. Um, people use it actually as a substrate. Um, you have enough time with open to work on this and then clean it before it starts to lock down. If you find that it's starting to get sticky, you can use some of the thinner to wipe it away. Um, that will help. And you can also use gel plates. I have screen printed with open and it's worked beautifully. Um, it's very versatile because of its slow drying properties in printmaking. Um, I've used it for relief prints, you know, like block prints. Um, so I'm just taking a little bit of raw umber and I'm rolling it out on a brayer. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just going to take a Q-tip and just remove some marks. And on the other side, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take some of the gel and I'm going to paint the gel down and I'm going to draw or just make some marks, let's say in the gel, and then I'm going to make some marks without the gel. And that'll show you three different applications in which uh, you can use open for printing, doing mono prints off of a piece of flex. But again, like I said, we've done some uh, educational pieces in the past where we showed you how to use it for screen printing, you can use it on block prints, collagraph, all of that. Okay. Use the go keep with the raw umber here. And then here you don't want to make your marks super thick because when you put the paper on, it'll squash down. Yeah, just make some marks. There we go. Now you can set up registration and do this right, but this is just a quick demo. Oops, I forgot. I need to make a mark in the um, whoops. <laughs> in the gel over here. A little bit more paint. There we go. Terrific. Okay, so I can work subtractively. I can come in and remove with a brush. 
creating values, different range of values. Again, I can come in and just paint into a gel to get some transparencies, or I can just paint straight onto the, to the um, matrix here, which is Plex. Then I have my paper. I'm not wetting the paper for this print. Just gonna lay this down, rub the back. I don't need to give this a lot of pressure. I'm not running it through a press. This is just a simple hand print monotype. I'm just gonna peel up, see how we're doing. Oh yeah, I got a nice transfer. Now you'll see in one spot I had the paint rather thick and you can see that that does not transfer as well. Here, this is with the gel. And you can see those transparencies came through nicely. And in this area, this is where I worked subtractively. So I can use this paint in a lot of different applications because of its qualities. Okay, so let's see, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, let's go ahead and look at the chat and I'll take a few questions and then that might be it for today. All right, let's see. Let's Yes, the, gr the glass is fragile. I usually do put a backing on it if I get it from the dollar store. That's true, because it's very thin glass. I mean, it's a dollar. So absolutely, yeah. Um, can you speed up time with a blow dryer? Um, you know, force drying acrylics has its uh, complications. I, I do think it would be better to speed up the drying time with mediums, um, because then you know you're not you know, going to cause any potential issues. Yeah, gel plates work terrific with this. I mean, you can go and go and go. Um, also, you can um, use, if gel, if the um, paint ever does set up on a gel plate, it tends to peel off. I know people that have made skins from gel plates. Um, that's a little different than the, uh, the Plex kind of, uh, the type of plastic. It'll actually, you know, lock down to this eventually. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up with some of the thinner and a little bit of water. And um, let's see, find my paper towels. Just show you how I do that. Now you can put it in a spray bottle again, like I mentioned, but I'm wiping this off. So I'm not as concerned with the 25% um, rule if I'm going to wipe this off. I actually use a combination of um, the thinner and um, water when I'm screen printing to keep the screen from locking up. Now granted this is still really wet. I could just wipe this off. I don't need to use the thinner. But if it's starting to get a little tacky, well actually a little tacky right there. The thinner will help out. Water will too actually. Um, but if you have like a collagraph that has a lot of texture um, or you're using a screen, the thinner does help get it out of those fibers and whatnot. Okay, let's see what else. Can you speed up the, okay, I asked, I answered that question. All right, you guys are great. All right, so oh, let's see if I have any more. You can see this demo um, on Facebook and YouTube later on. And again, we are demonstrating uh, this in little bits all month on Instagram. They're like five to 10 minute demos. And you're welcome to join us there as well. Let me go ahead and see if there's any more. All right, so listen, that's terrific. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll go ahead and pop back on and say goodbye. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can get with us anytime and ask us any questions about your, um, your applications, your materials, our materials, our materials, how our materials behave with others by emailing us at help at goldenpaints.com. Uh, Scott, you've been super. Uh, thank you for helping out. It was so nice to have you here. I see some thank yous. Thank you. I hope everyone stays well. Take care of yourself. And we look forward to seeing you here on Facebook again at the end of the month.